Hey guys, Ghost Prepper here. Have you been wanting to be more prepared but didn't exactly know where to start? Well look no further. Today we're going to be going over FEMA's checklist to building a basic emergency supply kit. So stick around, it's going to be a good one. Alright guys, before we get started, if you could please do me a favor and prepare that like button. Uh, it helps me out a lot, so thank you. Alright, now if you want to be more prepared but don't exactly know where to start, uh, FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency, actually made a checklist for you. So if you go on ready.gov, I'll put a link down in the description, they actually have a little printout, which is a checklist of emergency supplies, suggesting that you have these basic supplies just in case. So we're going to go over step by step uh, each one and give you some examples on how you can build your basic emergency prepared kit. Now as you'll see, this is two pages. Right, we're going to be going over the first, which is the basics. I'm going to do a second part video for the additional items. So today we're just going to be covering, in this video, the, the basic core items. As you can see, the first thing on our list is water. So water is actually one of the most important preps you can have. Uh, you can only live about three days without water. So clean drinking water, especially after a natural disaster, terrorist attack, any sort of emergency, is one of the most important things you can have. Uh, there's a couple different ways you can store water. So this is a uh, store-bought jug. This was filled. Um, do not reuse the milk jugs. Uh, even if you clean them out really well, there's still a good chance that bacteria can grow. So I would highly recommend if you're going to go this route, uh, definitely do the store-bought ones. This is obviously a case of water. Uh, this is a good way as well because it's individualized, so it's already portioned out. Um, and it's portable, which is nice. Um, this is another option. These are water bricks. So this is the one and a half one. They also make a three and a half that's about double the size. Uh, and this is nice. This I filled with tap water and treated it with liquid oxygen. You can also use a water preserver as well. It's entirely up to you. But that's just some different options. So what uh, FEMA recommends is one gallon of water per person per day for at least three days for drinking and sanitation. So let's just do some quick math. Um, if there is two of you, let's say it's you and your partner or your spouse, uh, there's two of you for three days, that's six gallons of water minimum, right? So that's a lot of water, so make sure you have that stored up. Uh, another thing I'd like to add to this, this is not on the list, but this would just be a, recommend, a recommendation, is I would look at getting uh, either some sort of water filtration, you could use a, this is a Sawyer Mini, uh, you could get a Life Straw, something like that, just in case something happens to your water storage. Uh, another option would be these uh, Aqua Tablets uh, that treat water as well. I would just do it as a backup, just in case you know something like this breaks or for whatever reason your water gets contaminated or damaged in any sort of natural disaster. It's always good to have a backup, so make sure you have plenty of clean drinking water on hand for all the members of your family. Remember, one gallon of water per person per day. All right, the next thing on our list is gonna be food. Now, FEMA recommends at least a three-day supply of non-perishable food. So that can be a number of different things. If you wanna do short-term food storage, there's stuff like these uh, pasta sides, you could do rice veronis, I have canned beans, uh, vegetable, you could do cans of tuna and some mashed potatoes, stuff like corned beef and hash. Um, white rice, stuff that's going to be shelf stable, that you're going to eat regularly, and that you can just have a little bit extra of in your pantry. Uh, if you want to go more of the emergency food route, you can do stuff like these day treks. Uh, this is like lifeboat emergency rations. Those are good for up to five years, so that's longer than most of this stuff. Um, and it comes sort of pre packaged and pre portioned out if you want to go that route. Um, there's also Stuff like these mountain house meals, these last for 30 years, that's going to last the longer than basically all this other stuff. These are individual meals, you just add water to, you can do that as well. It's really up to you, just make sure you have at least three days worth of food per person. Another recommendation I would make adding on to this would be make sure that you're going to buy stuff that you're going to actually eat. So uh, a mistake I made is I used to have tons and tons of tuna. I realized that I don't really like eating tuna all that much. I don't mind it every once in a while, but it's not something I'm prepared to eat every day, uh, maybe only once or twice a week. So I've definitely scaled back on the tuna and, and definitely uh, started doing more stuff like corned beef hash or canned chicken, stuff like that. Also, make sure that whatever you've prepared 
you have eaten before. Don't prepare a bunch of like, for instance, like these date trek bars, and then all of a sudden you find out, you know, oh, uh, it's got coconut in it, and I'm allergic to coconut or something like that. Just make sure whatever you're eating or whatever you've had that it's gonna sit well in your stomach. It's not gonna upset you, make you sick, and you're gonna be able to eat it. All right, so the third item on our FEMA checklist is a battery-powered or hand crank radio and an NOAA weather radio with tone alert and extra batteries for both. So there's a couple different options. Uh, this is a Midland weather alert radio that I have. Um, and this runs off of AC with a battery backup. I believe it uses three AA batteries. You can get something like this. This is going to be able to get emergency broadcasts as well as NOA um, weather alerts. The other thing is that you can get these Midlands also have NOA weather radio. Uh, the nice thing about these is these are also two-way. So I like to have both. It's entirely up to you. If you don't want to go this route, there's a bunch of uh, them on Amazon, the hand crank slash solar operated emergency radios. You can get something like that. Uh, these are nice because these are just going to be able to receive inbound radio transmissions. The nice thing about these is let's say if for whatever reason you're with someone else and you guys get separated, at least you can maintain some sort of communication. They don't go super far, but it is a nice feature. But regardless, you want to make sure you have some sort of emergency radio that's going to be able to get weather alerts or any sort of emergency broadcast so you can know what's going on and to follow the proper steps and procedures. All right, so the fourth thing on our list is going to be flashlights and extra batteries. Now you could do any sort of flashlight that's going to fit. Uh, you could get some sort of just small plastic cheap one like this. You can get a nicer stream light. This one takes multiple battery types. You can get something like that. But just making sure you have a flashlight just in case the power goes out or potentially for signaling as well. Um, I think another great option that this list does not mention would be a battery powered lantern. Something like this, this is the Streamlight Siege. This uses uh, AA batteries as well, um, and it has a uh, handle from which you can hang it. Also has a bottom clip and a magnet. I've actually used this, so we've lost power in our current uh, home a couple times, and I've actually used this. I put this with the magnet side on the top of the hood um, above my stove, like the ventilation hood, and I've used it to cook, so you can cook in the dark if you don't have a headlamp or something like that. Uh, it is a nice feature. A lot of these also have um, like a red mode that'll blink as well. So it's a nice feature to have. Um, and then making sure you have extra batteries. These are going to be for your flashlights as well as for the uh, aforementioned emergency radios as well. So you can do uh, just the standard alkaline. Uh, these are just Duracells I have. Those last a pretty long time. Or if you want to step it up, you could go with the lithium batteries. I'm actually preferring these. Even though they are more expensive, they do tend to last longer. So they're advertised of a 20-year shelf life, which is going to make them uh, just that much more valuable, that they're not constantly getting, you know, you don't have to worry about throwing them away, or they don't have a long shelf life. So they also last a little longer, in my opinion. So I prefer these, but just making sure you have uh, flashlights as well as extra batteries. Another good option, even though they're single use, in my opinion, would be uh, glow sticks as well. You could use these um, chem lights, glow sticks, whatever you want to call them. But I think those are a good option as well for ambient light and signaling. But just making sure you have a way to light up uh, your home and be able to get around properly. All right, so the next thing on our list is going to be a first aid kit. Now, this is one of the most important, if not the most important thing on the list, in my opinion. This is something you're going to be able to use in almost any uh, emergency. It doesn't even have to be a natural disaster. Every house should have a good first aid kit. Uh, on the table, I've got a couple options. This is sort of just a store-bought Johnson & Johnson first aid kit you pick up at any um, like Walmart or grocery store type of thing. That's going to be great. Uh, there's a lot of good applications for this. It's a pretty general first aid kit. Typically, stuff like this isn't too expensive. Uh, if you want to step it up a little bit, you can get uh, my beloved Adventure Medical Kits first aid kit. Uh, this is good for one to four people. Uh, this has a lot of the same supplies as well, but just making sure you have a good, well-stocked first aid kit. 
Another side note I'd like to make on this as well, make sure to not rob the kit all the time. I'm not saying if you need the supplies to not use them. By all means, if you need to use this first aid kit, use it. But just make sure that you either restock the supplies or maybe have a backup first aid kit, one you're using for daily use and then one you have to the side for emergencies. But just make sure you're not robbing the kit so when an emergency actually comes and you open it, you know, you're out of bandages, you're out of antiseptic, whatever you have in there, and all of a sudden now it's half empty. So just make sure they're fully stocked, but every home needs a good first aid kit. I think this is an excellent selection on the list, so just make sure you have a good first aid kit. It's a great place to start. All right, so the next item on our list is a whistle to signal for help. So this is if you're trapped in your home, maybe there's flooding, maybe there's been a hurricane or some sort of natural disaster. It's good to make sure you have a rescue whistle, right? Everyone wants to get rescued. So there's a couple different options. Um, a lot of these paracord survival bracelets that you see here, those will have rescue whistles on them. I think those are great. Uh, you can also get the SOL Slim Rescue Holler. This is a very slim, nice, bright orange rescue whistle. That actually comes in the Adventure Medical Kits First Aid Kit. So if you buy that First Aid Kit, you also get this as well. Not a sponsor, not a spokesman for it, just a big fan, so entirely up to you. Um, you can also get something like this. This is sort of a necklace for a uh, rescue whistle that has um, a ferro rod, compass, other things like that. So these are, these are actually great to make it into a necklace because then you always have it on your person. You could do that as well with uh, any of these, really. Uh, this is a lanyard hole as well, but just making sure you have your whistle on you. But it's definitely a great thing to have in your kit, so make sure you have a good rescue whistle. Alright, moving on down the list, our next line item is a dust mask to help filter contaminated air and plastic sheeting and duct tape to shelter in place. So the reason you'd have these items is to filter out any sort of airborne illness as well as any sort of nuclear event. Uh, if there was a dirty bomb in relation to a terrorist attack, as well as any sort of uh, nuclear incident, whether that be a nuclear bomb, a nuclear fallout, or just related from, uh, let's say, like a Chernobyl, Fukushima kind of incident where maybe a nuclear power plant melts down and now there's nuclear debris out in the air. So there's a couple different options you can do. This is an American N95. Uh, these are great. I know they're a little hard to come by now, especially with the whole pandemic. Uh, so you can go, this is the Chinese alternative, this is a KN95, uh, which recently the FDA endorsed as well. Um, as far as plastic sheeting, you can get something like this. So this is a six pack of uh, the 0.7 mil plastic drop cloth. So this is a nice uh, dirt and dust barrier, which will help uh, isolate. So you could put this around windows and doors. Uh, if you want a bigger thickness, they make it in a bunch of different thicknesses. I just went with one of the cheaper ones. There's a bunch of different uses for it, but if you want to see a video, I believe the Urban Prepper uh, made a video. I'll put that down in the description of how to make like a clean room. So you can do that, but this is what I had, uh, as well as duct tape. I've got this nice Gorilla Tape. Uh, a couple things as far as PPE go that I think the list kind of fails to mention. I would also have a nice pair of gloves. I think in any sort of natural disaster situation, you're going to want to have a nice set of gloves to protect your hands. Plus, if there's any sort of debris, let's say there's just a bad storm, a tornado, or hurricane, it's really nice to have a nice set of gloves to protect your hands. The other thing going along with the natural disaster theme is a nice tarp. So you can use these. I use this to go camping as my brown tarp, but it is nice if for whatever reason a window got knocked out. Uh, I can go ahead and put the tarp over it so I just don't have air or rain or whatever blowing in. So those are a couple little additional items. So these off to the side are just my personal recommendation. As far as the core FEMA checklist, those would be these items, the duct tape, the plastic sheeting, and then some sort of dust mask. So do with that what you will, but that's the core items on the FEMA checklist. Alright, we're here. We're going to talk about waste. Just because there's a natural disaster does not mean that your body stops. It does not mean that you're going to stop making garbage. So the next line item on the list is moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation. So you can get things like wet ones, these baby wipes, as well as garbage bags. You can also get the uh, contractor bags if you prefer those. 
but just making sure that you have a way to clean yourself uh, as well as remove waste from the house, whether that's garbage or yes, human, we're talking about poop. Now I've made a couple personal recommendations to add on this. So my recommendation is a five gallon bucket. Uh, I don't think I'm going to demonstrate it for you. There's definitely ways to make this into a makeshift uh, latrine. Uh, there's videos on the internet. Um, I've seen people do a pool noodle. They also sell a toilet seat that fits onto a five gallon bucket. So it's a good option. Um, plus, even if you're not using it as a toilet, there's plenty of uses for just a standard hardware store five gallon bucket. So I don't think it's that weird to own. The other thing, again, this is a personal recommendation of mine to add to the kitchen garbage bags that we keep as well, are shopping bags. So I don't like these plastic shopping bags, but you get them, you, they accumulate. Um, so we bought this little storage thing at Ikea, and it works really well. Just stuff it full of um, the little shopping bags, and it's just a great additional way to remove trash, um, as well as potentially other waste. So. These are my personal recommendations, but as far as what FEMA recommends, garbage bags, plastic ties, and some sort of moist towelettes, so you can keep yourself clean. All right, moving on down the list, our next line item is a wrench or pliers to turn off utilities. Now I know what you're thinking, ghost, there's nothing on the table. Do you not have a wrench or pliers? No, I do, but you know what those look like. They also make a special tool for the utilities. Uh, a shut off emergency, it's like a wrench hammer looking thing. I'll roll in a picture of it as well that you can purchase, but make sure you're able to turn off your emergency utilities, gas, water, stuff like that. The other thing um, is make sure you know where those shut offs are. I didn't, so one thing, I've been prepping for a couple years now, but one thing that, um, you know, even going through this, I thought, I'm gonna have all this stuff but I figured it would help new people, but even for experienced preppers, there's a lot of little things that you forget, and this was something that I didn't really have. I didn't know where my shutoffs were, and I didn't have that special tool, so I'm gonna be ordering that tool, and now that I know where my shutoffs are, I feel much better, so I think there's things that even veteran preppers can get out of a basic list like this. All right, guys, our second to last item on the list. What is this special tool, you ask? It's a can opener. Um, I thought this was kind of weird to have on the list, honestly, uh, but I did not realize that a lot of people apparently don't own these. I grew up with a manual can opener. Uh, I guess a lot of people also own electric can openers as well. So uh, make sure you have a manual hand can opener and not an electric one, because if the power isn't on, it's not gonna do any good. So make sure you have a manual can opener uh, it does put if kit contains canned food, so if you don't want to have a can opener, uh, you want to go with the Daytrex or Mountain House or eat rice all day, uh, you can do something like that. But I think this is good to have anyways, uh, especially if people, let's say you run out of food and someone gives you food and all of a sudden you're like, oh I can't open it because they don't have a can opener. Make sure you have a manual can opener, it's important. Alright guys, we're at the end of the list. Our last line item on the list is local maps. Uh, once again, this is something that I actually didn't have. I've relied so heavily on GPS that I didn't have any local maps. Now you can obviously buy road maps uh, like on Amazon or at gas stations. They have them everywhere. They're pretty inexpensive if you want to do something like that. But if you want to save money like I do, uh, I actually went online. So I was able to find a local map of my town, a state map as well as uh, a map of all the different cities. I was able to print them out for free, uh, which is pretty neat. So you can definitely print out maps. There's places to find them online if you don't want to buy something like a road map. These are a little harder to read, so if you want the big fold-out map, they may be easier, but it's up to you. The other thing is uh, there's a bunch of apps. Uh, on If you have a smartphone, which I'm assuming you do, there are, uh, there's an app, uh, so I have an iPhone, there's an app called Avenza Maps, and that basically lets you download maps offline so you don't need data. Uh, it's just downloading maps, that's the whole app. Uh, most of them are free, some of them you have to pay for, but I was able to find uh, like my local town as well as my state map. All that stuff was free. So you don't have to get Avenza, again, not a sponsor, it's just what I found on the iPhone. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you guys use any other offline map apps. 
map apps. That's just the one I found. It was the highest one on the app store, but there's a ton of others. I'm sure they all work great, but make sure you have local maps. All right, guys, that was the list. We did it. We went through everything. We checked all the boxes. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know down in the comments. I know before you comment, this is missing this, this, and this. So this is just the first page of the FEMA checklist. I just went over the basic items. So if there's some new preppers out there or people wanting to be more prepared for stuff like this, I didn't want to overwhelm you. This is all the basics. This is going to get you through a bunch of different uh, emergencies or um, any sort of disaster. So it's a good starting point. Don't think that that's bad, but there is definitely more that you can do. I just didn't want to overwhelm you guys. So this was just the first page. There's a whole second page of additional items, but this is all the basics. So let me know what you guys think. I'm going to do the second page in a second video. I was going to be like a part two, just so you guys don't get overwhelmed. But guys, Thank you so much for watching it. If you stuck with me, I appreciate it. Uh, if you liked the video, please hit that like button as always. I really appreciate it. Uh, also comment down below. I love reading the comments. I love reading your guys' feedback. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Your support means the world to me. So thank you guys so much. Also guys, if you want to follow me on social media, I just made an Instagram. It's brand new. So it's a uh, ghost.prepper. Um, I've got a couple photos up there as well, so if you want to get a heads up on the videos as well as some exclusive content over on Instagram, go follow me. It's ghost.prepper. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys over there.